Well, good morning. We had a little snafu on the outside of our worship service, so I look a little windblown, but we wanted to at least record this sermon for those of you who, who want to follow along. We appreciate uh, this COVID experience and how we have to be open to abundant grace with technology and, and everything that we do. So thank you, and thank you for tuning in. So today's uh, gospel lesson is taken from the first chapter of Mark, and it's the 30th, starting with the 35th verse through verse 39. And today I'm going to do Electio Divina. So I want to invite you to focus on the lesson as it is read. I'm going to read it three times. So I'll invite you even to go ahead and just close your eyes as I'm reading the lesson. And I want you to just listen for a word or a passage that touches your heart. And when, that, when you find that word or phrase, then just take it in and just gently recite it and reflect on it during the silence that will follow. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place. And there Jesus prayed. And Simon, his companions, hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, everyone is searching for you. He answered, let us go to the neighboring town so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues, and casting out demons. So I just invite you to reflect on that word or phrase. Now the second reading, this reading will be for the purpose of hearing or seeing Christ in the text. And then ponder that word as, as it has touched your heart and ask where that word or phrase touches your life this day. In the morning, while it was still very dark, Jesus got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. Ask yourself about that phrase, where it touches your life this day. And now for the third reading, this is for the purpose of experiencing Christ calling us forth into a being, into doing. In the morning, while it was still very dark, Jesus got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. So I would ask you, what is Christ calling you to do or to be? Let us pray. 
gracious God. As we read the scriptures, we ask that these scriptures would guide us, open our hearts and minds to see you more fully, that each word that we take in, that would bless our day. Amen. Now I've talked about a lot about prayer, and in particular today, I want to talk about how we pray. How do we pray? We're going to start with the topic of making room for God. So how do you make room? How do we make room for God in a way that connects us more deeply to God and changes us? You know, birthing us in a life of peace and deep joy. And in order to get to this topic, I want to first stop. I want to talk a bit about science. I know that, that seems weird even to me. But you see, I have a chair over here with me. And this is really a nice chair. It's a solid chair, and it's strong. And I can sit in this chair. And I have no doubt that it will hold me. And I'm pretty sure that if I tripped and whacked my head against the chair, that I would wind up with a, with a knot the size of a golf ball on my head. But guess what? I'm not going to demonstrate that just to prove my point. Take my word for it. That chair is solid. And yet, a scientist would tell us that this chair is mostly empty space. And not only would the scientist tell us that this chair is empty space, but she would, she would also tell us that this chair is in constant motion. This chair, just like all matter on Earth, is made up of atoms. And believe it or not, atoms are 99.9% .9 space, and they are in constant motion. So, how is it possible that this chair is 99.9% .9 empty space and constantly in motion, and yet I can sit on it, and I could knock myself if I whack my head against it? It's, it's beyond my pay grade. But you know, I've been assured by minds greater than mine that this is most certainly true. So, what does this have to do with prayer and making room for God? Well, take out your day timer or your phone and list your daily calendar. You see how busy it is, how much stuff is written in? That's what most of our days look like. We're busy. We are booked. We have obligations to fulfill and we have places to go and people to see. And it doesn't matter. Whether you are a junior in high school, a single working adult, a parent with young children, or if you're well into your retired years, we are busy people. And the idea of fitting God into our schedules is for many of us both daunting and guilt producing. You know, have you ever gone to bed at night and you thought to yourself, oh man, I must be a terrible Christian. I didn't, I didn't do my devotions today. Well, I think many of us have. But what if? What if prayer isn't primarily about fitting God into our schedules? What if God is already in our schedules? What if prayer isn't about bringing God into daily life, but more about us growing in the awareness of the one who was already there. That's what I believe to be true about prayer. And it's inherently, it's a freeing belief. Let me say some more. The longer that I have walked this journey of life and faith, the, the less that I believe in the duality that we call sacred and secular. You see, many of us, we have been led to believe that, that our time in worship you know, in our, our daily devotions, that, that's sacred. And, and the rest of life, you know, like, like going to, to church or doing the dishes or cleaning out the gutters or going to dinner with friends or the grocery sh store doing our shopping, that, that's secular. But you see, that way of framing the world in which we live implies that God is present and active in some things and not in others. 
And I don't believe that to be true. I believe that God is present and active in every moment of every day in every life. And to press out that metaphor of the chair that we see, we see a solid world around us. And God, God fully inhabits the 99.9% .9 of the space between, everywhere, all the time. We see a schedule that is booked solid, but God already inhabits every moment. You know, rather than seeing God who is far off or who occasionally drops in or checks in when we're doing this faith stuff, I believe that God inhabits everything and every moment and every life. And you know what? I get that notion from Scripture. And here's just, just two examples. The first one is from Psalm 139. Is there any place I can go to avoid your spirit, to be out of your sight? If I climb to the sky, you're there. If I go underground, you're there. If I flew on morning's wings to the far western horizon, you find me in a minute. You're already there waiting. And here's from Paul in the book of Acts. God is the one in whom we live and move and have our being. God inhabits every moment of every day of every life. And because of that, all of life is sacred. All of life is holy. See, so prayer then, it's more about us growing in the awareness of God's gracious presence and activity. And as that awareness grows, lives change in wonderful ways. As I have worked with a spiritual director and I have engaged in certain daily practices, my awareness of God's presence and activity in my life has grown tremendously. And you know, it's, it's in this awareness that has been life-changing. It's given more birth to joy and gratitude and peace than I've ever known no matter what's going on or happening around me. So on the one hand, I want to say that making room for God, it's a misnomer. God already fills every room of your house and every moment of your life. But at the same time, this awareness, it grows more profoundly when we make time for certain disciplines, certain prayer practices, that over the years have helped disciples to grow in their awareness of, of and experience God's gracious and transforming presence. And that touches the point with today's scripture. Jesus believes, Jesus believes that God is with him always. Jesus believes that God inhabits every moment of his life. But you know, the gospels tell us over and over again, that Jesus, he regularly, he removes himself from the busyness of daily life to pray. In today's gospel, Mark tells us that Jesus, he rises early in the morning, he goes to a place without distractions, and he connects with God. Jesus knows what many of us have discovered. It's in this regular, intentional time that we learn to see and hear and experience the one who inhabits every moment of every day. See, knowing that we're all busy, I just want to give you a few suggestions for how you can make room for the one who already fills every room of life. The first thing is to choose a consistent time each day. Like Jesus, I find that works for me, that best works for me best is at the morning. Otherwise, I'm just off to the races and, and I never slow down enough to make room. But see, that may not work for you. Find the time that does and be consistent. Second, choose a consistent space where you're not likely to be disturbed. 
You know, space matters. Not to everyone, but for many it does. In the same way that, you know, like a, a lake house or a beach house takes on a certain feel when you return to it every summer, as does a, a favorite table at a favorite restaurant. Having a consistent space that is set apart for you and God, that sort of takes on a feel, a spirit that, that helps many of us in our spiritual practices. Third, start small. Start with five minutes if that's all you think you can commit. You know, it's not how much time you begin with that matters as much as that you just actually begin. But if your experience is like mine, and as you begin to experience the deepening sense of peace and joy, you'll naturally, you'll want to take more time. Not because you have to, but because you want to. And finally, pick a spiritual practice and then live with it for a few weeks. Like any new skill, prayer practices, they take time to develop and to grow comfortable with. Well, throughout our time together, I've been introducing you to some of the prayer practices that have blessed the disciples throughout the years. And today, we learned about Lectio Divina. I encourage you to give it a try. See, none of these spiritual practices are difficult. In fact, they are deceptively easy. What matters is that we actually do them. So here's what my life looks like. Every morning when I get out of bed, I go into my home office and I just shut the door and I turn on some quiet music in the background. And these days I tend to do maybe 15 or 20 minutes of centering prayer. And then I do the Lectio Divina. And then I get on with my day. You know, I can't explain why, but these practices, along with others that I have introduced and used, have, have changed me and gotten me to be more excited about my faith journey than I was at any other time in my life. I've experienced more peace, more joy, more gratitude than I ever have. And I more readily sense God's presence in my everyday life. You know, I can't explain how that happens. I can only bear witness that it has. And it is my fervent prayer that it does the same for you. Amen.